Okay, 2021, these movies are not a set of blueprints. Hey everybody, welcome to Mainly Movies. Today I'm going to be talking about my top 5 disaster movies. If you're new here, please consider subscribing for a variety of movie related content like reviews, rank lists, and trailer reactions. Well, it's the first Saturday of the month, and the year, so that means it's time for another episode of the Movie Nerds Club. With 2020 now in the rearview mirror, we decided to give that disaster of a year one last send off by making disaster movies our theme for January. So, after you watch my top disaster movie picks, make sure you check out the videos of the other members of the Movie Nerds Club. Elsie Screen Talk, Rachel's Reviews, Ren Geekness, Ryan Cam, and Zach Pope. Links to their videos are in the description below. This fifth installment of the Movie Nerds Club brings us back to another extremely broad category. In fact, I think this is our broadest yet, which of course makes it one of the most difficult to narrow down. Disaster movies have been around for a long time. And they're a really diverse set of films. You've got natural disasters, man-made disasters, aliens or other sci-fi tinged disasters, storms, crashes, outbreaks, you name it. Disaster movies also seem to vary quite a bit in quality too. And I have no problem admitting that many of my favorites are objectively bad films. So this list is going to be an interesting mix that you're probably going to disagree with. But remember, these are just my top movies, not the top movies, so be sure to post your own personal top 5 disaster movies in the comments below. I've already reviewed some of these movies on this channel, so if you want to check those out for some more in-depth thoughts on each of them, I'll put links in the description below and also link them up in the cards as we go along. Alright, let's get this top list started. Coming in at number 5, 2012. So remember that whole objectively bad thing I was just talking about? Yeah, this one fits the bill, I know. I debated a few other movies to put in at number 5, which are better movies and that I like just as much, or maybe even a tiny bit more, but I wanted to make sure this one made the cut because A, it's like the epitome of a disaster movie, and B, it never gets any love. It's kind of funny looking back on the whole Mayan 2012 thing now, but it was certainly jokingly on people's minds leading up to that fateful December date, so it was a prime subject for a movie like this, and 2012 is just a bonkers movie. So this isn't a film that I love by any means, but it is one that I'm always entertained by. It's just so ridiculous that I can't not have a good time with it. At first glance, it definitely seems like any other over-the-top blockbuster disaster movie, and it certainly has all the hallmarks of one, including huge CGI destruction scenes and a save the world plotline. But there's a lot of comedy thrown into the mix, especially during the more traditionally over-the-top scenes, so it's clear that Roland Emmerich was was poking fun at not only this film, but also at many of the disaster film tropes that he had helped to create and propagate over the years. This movie doesn't take itself seriously, and that's a huge part of why it works for me. If the film didn't take that self-deprecating turn it does, it would have been a pretty generic addition to the genre, but the humor brings it up a couple steps for me. Coming in at number 4, Independence Day. The Roland Emmerich love continues here with one of his first disaster movies. He certainly didn't invent the genre, but he might have perfected its blockbuster appeal. Independence Day is a disaster movie, but it's much more than that, expertly blending a whole variety of additional genres, science fiction, action, comedy. It helped to create a new blueprint for disaster movies, one where the disaster itself was an intense but not entirely humorless affair. Disaster event movies existed before, with the likes of Earthquake, Airport, and so on, but this film turned it all into compelling entertainment that was truly fun. Like most disaster movies, especially from the last couple decades, Independence Day is a ridiculous film. But in between its comedic dialogue, disaster movie cliches, and endearingly dated special effects, it's actually got a surprisingly good story. It takes its time to set the stage before disaster strikes and it turns into an all-out action film. It establishes its characters and their relationships with one another. It builds up some good tension and makes you actually care about these people, which 
makes it a whole lot easier to root for them. It's a dumb movie for sure, and I've got some personal nostalgia for it since I watch it every 4th of July, but how can you not love a movie that features a dog jumping to safety from a fireball in slow motion? Coming in at number 3, The Day After Tomorrow. Wait, this wasn't supposed to be a top 5 Roland Emmerich movies list? Okay, this is the last one of his, I promise. So this movie had the benefit of coming out right around the time I started to take movie watching seriously. I started going to the theater at least once a week and saw just about everything that came out. But I hadn't exactly started to view things with a critical eye yet. So I loved the absurd climate change environmentally driven disaster plot. And even though it isn't broadly remembered in the positive light that say Independence Day is, I still love it in all its ridiculous cheesy goodness. I'm a sucker for movies featuring heroic scientists. They always play out the same way. Scientists notice a deadly threat and warns the people in charge, who promptly dismiss their warnings. Said deadly threat strikes, and now the scientist is the only one who has the knowledge and skills to save the world. It's dumb, it's silly, it's an extremely overused trope, but I love it. And so I love this movie in spite of all its over-the-top implausibility and inaccuracies. I mean, you've got a group of climate conducting an experiment and they're not using the metric system? This movie's so unbelievable. It's absurd, the special effects haven't aged that well, and it takes itself a little too seriously, but man do I have a good time with this one. Coming in at number 2, Twister. That's right, Twister makes my top 5 two months in a row, for very different categories. I know a lot of people aren't the biggest fan of this movie, but I loved it since I was a kid. Unsurprisingly, it's yet another movie featuring heroic scientists, so it's probably no surprise that I like it as much as I do. Just like with its inclusion in last month's list, I think this one might be a bit of an unexpected choice. Twister isn't in the same vein of disaster movies as something like Independence Day, but I definitely still view it as a disaster movie. It's a natural disaster movie, and an exciting one at that. Whereas last month I focused on Jo and her character's background and development, Twister's shining aspect for this month's category is its action. Being a mid-90s movie, the special effects can sometimes come across a bit dated now, but the vast majority are practical effects that I truly think still hold up really well today. We might not have landmarks exploding left and right here, but the sequence of tornadoes that serve as the pseudo-villains of this story are still pretty impressive in their localized devastation, and result in some extremely entertaining action set pieces. It might not be the most traditional of the disaster movies, but it'll always be one of the most effective and enjoyable for me. So that means my number one disaster movie is The Mist. Yep, going a little bit non-traditional for the number one slot too. I debated including this one since it's a horror film first and foremost, but disaster movies can really span any number of other genres, so I kept it in. I love Stephen King's stories, and if you watched my 2020 13 Nights of Halloween series, you know my opinions of the movie adaptations vary quite a bit, but The Mist may very well be my all-time favorite Stephen King movie, which in itself is a bit of a non-traditional choice, so I guess it all works out. The disaster at the center of this film is a bit different than that of your typical disaster movie. We don't have all that much information about it for much of the runtime. Not only just what caused it, which is a common mystery to be solved in some disaster movies, but also what it even is. Although it's got its moments of horror and Lovecraftian tinged action, this is comparatively a subdued disaster movie. It's not quite as bombastic and over the top as most of the other movies to make the list, opting instead to be more of a character driven story. In fact, the disaster itself serves as more of a catalyst for the character drama and psychological horror than anything else. But without the disaster, it couldn't have worked. So it's still a disaster movie in my mind, just a little bit different of one with one hell of an ending. All right, so there you have it, my top five disaster movies. What are your top disaster films? Be sure to post your own ranking in the comments below, and don't forget to check out the pics of the other members of the Movie Nerds Club. Remember, I've already reviewed some of these movies, so you can check those videos out for some more in-depth discussion of each, as well as my ratings, pros and cons, and even tailored film recommendations. Also, if you're interested in buying any of these movies, I do have affiliate links for all of them in the description below. I get a small commission for 
from anything you buy using one of my links, so I'd really appreciate it if you'd use them if you're in the market for any of these movies. All right, so if you got some enjoyment insider information out of this top list, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit that like button. And if you haven't done so already, please hit subscribe or add it to see more videos like this, as well as movie reviews. Till next time, this has been Alyssa with Mainly Movies. The way life should be.